What is going on, guys? You already know we got the IHC lowering kit on. Guys, today we're putting the IHC helper bag kit on Steven's F-150. Huge shout out to IHC for sending us this helper bag kit. We really appreciate it. Guys, I'm gonna link their Instagram and their website in the description box below. If you're interested in any of this stuff, go go visit them, DM them on Instagram, tell them we sent you. All right, as Brian was saying, most of you already know my truck. I've done the three, five lowering kit from IHC. Uh, and, that, and whenever I'd done that video, I said I was already gonna go do the helper bags. Well, IHC ended up reaching out to us and sending us the helper bag kit. So today we're gonna to be installing this helper bag set on my F-150. All right, so let's get in to see what they uh, actually sent us, what comes with this uh, helper bag kit. Um, obviously, it's gonna be some bags. These are Firestone 9000s. They are rated for 1,500 uh, pounds each. So the load capacity is 3,000 whenever you put these two bags on. Um, comes with some air hose. Here, let's set this box down. Ugh. Comes with some airline. You're gonna need a little Dang, bit of this. Dang, I went and fumbled it. Now, our kit is just gonna be a manual fill kit that's gonna have a Schrager valve at the back. Um, you can get the kit that has the electronic adjustable setup, but this is just gonna be the manual one. I don't have a bunch of changing my load on the back of the truck very often. This is mainly to help stop from hitting my Bottom and out, hitting bump stops if you still have them. My truck does not have bump stops. Uh, all of these brackets are bolt on. Nothing is weld on on this kit. Everything is made in the USA, obviously. Um, they make it all themselves. The bags actually mount, this bracket will actually mount the bag over the leaf spring rather than being over axle. So on lower trucks, you don't have to worry about space. You have plenty of space for this. All right, everything is laser cut, CNC bent, uh, really well made, good quality stuff. Uh, yeah, that stuff looks amazing. These bags look really great too. It comes with all your needed hardware to install. Um, it, like I said before, everything is bolt on. You don't have to weld anything on or anything like that. No uh, drilling either. Yeah, no drilling. Everything bolts up into the body so you don't have to drill extra holes or anything like that. Um, comes with this little sheet here that tells you what's included in the kit. There is a QR code down here that you'll have to scan to get the in installation instructions. Um, I have already printed these. Uh, Brian will show you how to scan that QR code here in a second and get those instructions yourself. All right, guys, the instructions to this are very detailed. If you want, pause this video. You can scan this QR code. And then, Stephen, let's show them how detailed these instructions are. So, Stephen actually, uh, he pre planned or he was prepared for this and he went ahead and just printed the directions out. Yeah, so, I uh, already. I think that's a sheet for pre-installation measurement. All right, where the heck does it start? Okay. Well, my printer has some weird lines, but literally every step that you need to go through to install these things is printed out exactly where to put your brackets, how to position them. So, on that note, let's get to putting this thing on the rack and getting this thing installed. All right, so I forgot to mention before we put this thing on the lift, I wanted to do a couple videos of underneath where the frame actually can make contact with the axle. Um, whenever I done my 3.5 kit, lowered it, I left the bump stops out. I don't have a lot of problems with the axle smacking the frame, but I also don't carry a heavy load very often. Um, I know a lot of guys like to leave some form of rubber under there for a bump stop. You obviously taking up the travel in between your frame and your axle, you're gonna have more contact whenever you have some bump stop. So we're gonna take a couple videos. We're gonna throw a couple guys in the bed of the truck, get my axle to smack my frame. And then we're gonna do after, once the bags are installed to show you how this helps stop that from happening so 
even at a low PSI, like if you're not running a load, but you don't want your axle smack in the frame, these bags are gonna help keep that from happening. So you can run like five, 10 PSI in the bags and that'll keep your frame from slapping your axle. Man, we got Corey. He ain't ever worked on this thing like a day in his life. He's pulling his intake right on out. I need to guide Give me some. No, I, you take this off. You take all that, that dirt and shove them in all those holes. <laughs> 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 I, give me some rags so I can put that in there. They're saying you need to move the axle all the way out of the way and lower the leaf springs. Basically, what needs to happen is. This bracket that your bag mounts to, this mounts on top of your leaf springs. Uh, these two holes right here, your leaf spring pins go through. Uh, if you watched our lowering video, the leaf spring pins were a pain in the A to get out. So that's gonna be the hardest part. Hopefully it's not a big deal this time around since we've already had them out. Uh, but if you come over here to the truck, I actually don't know. They're wanting you to undo the shock and lower the leaf spring and undo your U-bolts and move this axle out of the way. Um, you should be able to undo your U-bolts, lift this up, and then this is gonna be mounted somehow like that. So, I'll go to do some figuring out. Um, obviously, you're going to have to support your differential, unbolt everything, lift this thing up. So, let's get to it. So, I'm still reading the instructions, trying to figure out how all this works. This is my first bag install. So, uh, but this bolts on around your C frame, or your, your C frame, your frame. Uh, obviously, this is where your frame will sit. These brackets are directional, so you'll want to pay attention to the angle as to which you are putting what side on what. Um, but this will be bolted around your axle and then they've got a plate that actually goes on the back side and will bolt to the back side and bolt this thing down. I look how good that fits too. Yeah, it's really good fitment. Really good. Very well designed. So. Alright, um, I'm going to have to go get the transmission jack to hold this diff up, get everything bolted, and hopefully these leaf spring pins aren't a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna unbolt these shocks so I can get the axle up out of the way. Um, IHC instructions tell you to drop the backside of the leaf spring and drop the leaf spring and stuff. I don't feel like I'm gonna need to do that. Now, if I get into this and end up having to move it, I'll update y'all, obviously. Uh, but unbolting my shock, I'm probably gonna modify this bolt because it is making contact with my, uh, oh, what are these bolts? The U-bolt here. So I'll undo this shock, but I'm probably gonna end up modifying that so that's not rubbing. And then I wanna undo the bottom bolt on that shock as well to get it out of the way. Um, and then after I get the shocks loose, I've got my transmission jack here. I'll just lift up on the pumpkin and send the axle up. And then hopefully I have clearance to get the pins out of the uh, leaf spring. Uh, this is just a 15 and an 18. So. U-bolts are going to be a 21. There we go. Now these are the pins that I'm talking about, bottom side nut. So we'll have to lift the axle up so we get access to the top of those pins. Uh, that's what this is gonna come in handy for. Now if you're on the, doing this on the ground, which I don't recommend because it's a pain, but then you just need a floor jack. block keep my axle from rotating or my diff from rotating which we hope you're not
I'm gonna move these out of the way. My U bolts. Uh, so it'd probably be easier if I had this out of the way, all the way, but. All I need is to get a hold of these top pins. I am gonna have to clamp these together because I'm gonna have to have both pins out at the same time. Point, point at the pins real quick. Yeah, these pins here and here. Okay. Um, I am gonna wanna clamp these together so they don't come apart because then this bracket right here is gonna go on there like that. Well, actually, yeah, I'm gonna have to. I don't know. I wish this was up higher. Oh, I'm hitting my shot on this side. Well, oh. what oh, damn day? Maybe I can get this up a little higher. <laughs> There we go. So basically just jack your axle up far enough. I want to get these pins all the way out. So I need pretty good distance above it. But then uh, locking vice grips, I'm gonna hold the top, undo the pin. I gotta go grab a clamp and all my tools, obviously. Right now I'm just putting a clamp on. So I put the bracket up here so I could make sure I have enough spacing. Uh, you obviously don't want to get in the way of putting this on so only like half an inch or so past that last bolt and you'll be fine and then that should hold your spring pack together as you take the bolts out nice set of locking vice grips okay you can get a good bite of that head the pin nut size is 19 Oh. A handy handy impact <coughs> and then I'm going to hold my pliers on the other side <coughs> pin one if you've never had these pins out guys they can be it can be a pretty rough time yeah. Uh, Straight up not a good time sometimes, but you literally have to put the squeeze on it. Yeah, so in the lowering kit video, I said if you can source leaf spring pins, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Because uh, sometimes it's easier to just cut them and put new ones in than sit here and fight them with vice grips. So guys, we're not gonna film this, we're not gonna film this whole process. After we get these back out, we'll come back and show you what to do next. We just don't wanna bore you with trying to get these pins out. Yeah, cause it's, it can be a process, but. Um, I did put some penetrating oil on the threads. Uh, that does help, as long as you got some good quality penetrating oil. Um, so, and I might have been out before and they're still fighting me, so. All right, so I got both these pins out on this side. Uh, I'm going to go over to the wire wheel since I am reusing these pins and clean up these threads. Uh, now that we got the pins out, the brackets are going to go here and then your pin will go back through and then tighten down. Uh, the torque spec is on the instructions. They say 110 foot pounds for this nut. So a decent little torque, not nothing crazy, but nothing. Don't baby it either. So I'm gonna clean up these bolts, get this bracket bolted on, and then we'll uh, work on the top mount. Uh, I did look at the hardware here. On this side, since the shock is on the back behind the axle, this fancy little bracket here actually is a shock extender to move the shock out of the, out of the way of the bag a little bit. So that's what this thing's for. I was sitting here looking at this, trying to figure out what the heck this thing was for. 
if I just read the instructions a little bit, I would have figured that out. But uh, it actually extends your shock location over to help with the position of the shock in the bag. So we'll be back. First pin in. Actually, I probably should. Well, probably should have this pin in here just so everything's to help with locating so your bracket isn't shifted side to side. So, I'm trying to get the best angle I can for you guys. Make sure we're on. Tighten. All right. So, there everything's touched. And then. They're about 110. I can take the torque wrench later. 110 Dougie Douglas. Do no. not do 110 Dougie Douglas. And now uh, I just got to clean up the threads on my other pin here and put this side back on. Then we'll go back or go to mounting the top bracket. So now we uh, can move on to mounting this bracket. So this bracket that I was talking about earlier, you got this plate that goes on the back side and then that clamps around your frame. frame. So now and then you got all the bolts that you need. I gotta make sure I got the right bracket. Make sure I got the right angle. Look at this. Thank God. Ripped yeah. To that Puma Panther looking shirt. What is I wash it. What is the Puma logo? A Jaguar or a Panther? A Puma. Oh, like a Puma is like a legit. A cat. <laughs> Puma. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that, that's what it is. Is a Puma. <laughs> Oh man, Brian. Ain't ain't Timon and Pumba? Pumba's the big pig. No, Puma. P-U-M-A. It's a Puma. It's a cat. Oh, so Pumba is the fat pig off it's the line. It's a name of a pig. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Like I was saying on these brackets, Brian over here not knowing what a Puma is. So if you look, they're angled different. So... Obviously, you want to go with the angle of the spring. So this one is well, going to be D for driver, P D for, for passenger. Yeah, just in case D or P isn't on there for whatever reason. And then you got all these bolts with washers. And they come with locking nuts. Uh, you can go ahead and take this clamp off that I hercules on and can't get off. So then get that clamp off since I got that bolted down. All right, so what I was noticing about these brackets, they got a big old hole in the middle that I didn't know what it was for. Well, apparently on this driver's side, you have a bracket for your brake lines. So you're gonna have to move this stuff out of the way. And then there's a connector for the harness that's gonna have to be unclipped. So all that stuff where that mounts will be right in this hole. So I'll have to loosen that up get that stuff out of the way, slide this bracket up in there, bolt it down, and then mount that stuff back to the frame. So all right, so I got all the hardware in my bracket here. Uh, all right, let's get a good shot at that all mounted up. That looks incredible. So. These are 19s, uh, they're 80 foot pounds, what IHC is recommending on these bolts. So not as tight as the pins here, but I'll get all these tightened down and then we'll get the mountain bay, so.
there she mounted. Sheesh. You can see here, they look different. <laughs> They're the same bag. Uh, one's just tucked in. So I'll show you how to extend your bag out like this. Um, I didn't get an air nozzle. Just take your little air gun here. I use a little rag, but just fill it up with air. Well, that's fully extended, but so uh, I like really, that. It's really neat. bracket back in so what was that bracket just a 10 millimeter yeah that bracket was just 10 uh 10 millimeter one 10 millimeter bolt undone that bracket and then that little wire the uh, little wiring harness up top and just popped out and then you run the bracket behind all it so all right so when installing the bag you have one screw that goes in the bottom to the base plate and then you have your holes three holes on top your two mounting holes and then your bolt for the are the valve hole for your air uh, they send you everything you need obviously uh, you'll take two of these bolts so it comes with four bolts for these and then your little valve so and these it looks like it came with the quick connect valves so your hose will just push down into this and snap in. Very nice. And it comes with a T to connect both bags to the same valve outlet. And your little Schrader valve. So, then whenever you mount this, you are going to mount the bottom first. So you'll want to take the bottom and screw to your base plate. So your base plate's got that one bolt. You take this and just twist it on and just spins on. And you want it to where keep going until your this hole lines up. That looks pretty good there. Cause you, Obviously you don't want the bag twisted or anything weird. You want it as straight as possible so you're not putting a lot of stress on the side of the bag. But then get that pulled up. Get your mounting bolts. Which I'm kind of blind on this because it's up in the air too high. And these bolts, they say only 30 foot pounds. So, and that was a 14 millimeter for these bolts. Uh, the valve itself looks like it's a 14 as well. Uh, let's see what they say on torque on this. I said tighten this till snug. Obviously, with this being air, you're going to want to put some sort of sealer on your threads either a liquid sealer, tape sealer. Uh, once you get everything together and start applying air to the bags, you'll wanna do a leak check. Uh, just some soapy water, same way you would check a, a nail on a tire or something. You just spray all your fittings and your valves and make sure nothing's leaking. Obviously, the last thing you want with any type of air is for your air to leak out. So I'm gonna go get some thread tape put on this and throw it in there. So should look nice and smooth obviously you want to put it on so like as you're tightening it down it's not trying to pull off the uh, thread which i think i might have been backwards but should look like that obviously hand start it and i'm just doing that off feel uh i've been doing this for a while so just don't over tighten it to where it feels like you're gonna strip it out. You just want it nice and snug, not too much pressure. 
but tight enough that you're not gonna leak it, obviously. Uh, so now, for this side, we are going to probably do, go ahead and show you guys installing that shock relocation bracket. And then we won't film the other side because it's literally the same process. You won't have to fight the wires or the brake lines on the other side. It's all clear. Uh, and then after we get the other side installed, we'll route the line. And I'll show you where we're going to hook up the Schrader valve to air these bags up whenever you need to add air or whatnot. So I will highlight the other side, but it might be some sped up footage. But. Yeah, we'll just do some B-roll clip, whatever. So. So, shock relocation bracket is... All right, so for now, Stephen, explain this shock bracket that we think we got wrong. Well, I don't know if, because this kit is for newer model F-150s as well. It goes from 15 to like 20, 21. Uh, so I'm assuming the bracket's included to clearance the shock from the bag, but this top mount isn't long enough to fit, so this might not fit our model. Uh, we're going to obviously be in touch with IHC just to make sure and we can add something in in the later of this video if we need to. Uh, but for now, we're going to run it without this bracket and whenever I get everything together and get on the ground, we're going to check clearance of the shock and the bag and then address it if we need to later. So anyway, so I went ahead and lowered my axle back down. Uh, with the way I'm doing this compared to the instructions is like the axle, I just jacked the axle up out of the way. Well, in the, that process, the axle actually shifted back a little bit and all my hardware on the backside of the mount here was in my way of the bag mounting. So I went ahead and lowered it back down, put it back on the pins. So whenever I put my bag on here, it's not in my way. So I just wanted to make that keynote point that you might have to move stuff around before you put your bag in uh, just for clearance and stuff. So same process as the other side was, take the two pins out Put your bracket on this bolts up there's no wiring or anything on the back side so the plate just goes up there and gets bolted on real simple and then so now i'm just going to mount the bag Next step is going to be running my airline. I'll show you all how to do that, obviously. Look at the instructions, kind of see where they ran theirs, and uh, go from there. So, oh. All right, so everybody that I've been uh, seeing install these kits have been installing the Schrader valve, where you air up the uh, tire sensors, or the tire sensors, <laughs> that where you air up the airbags, uh, where your license plate mount hole is. So. I thought it was just a straightforward bolt-in process, but my hole is smaller. I don't know if other people's holes are bigger where this fits just right in, but I'm gonna have to drill through this to make this a little bigger to hold this. And then once we do that, we'll be able to mount the license plate with this and that'll hold the license plate and then that'll be where you fill up this thing at, so. All right, so I drilled the hole bigger. I got a bit that fit, so. What I didn't realize was there, this is actually just plastic and there is about an inch and a half nub of plastic on the backside. So obviously this is only yay long. I had to go on the backside and cut that off with a razor. Yeah, so you can see the nub on that far side and then where that light is and the hole, that's where I cut the nub off on this side. Now, whenever I run this through, I'll have enough sticking out that the air hose will be able to press up against there and compress that Schrader valve. And then conveniently enough, she will fit just like that, tighten it down. So now that that's mounted, we have airline, and a T. So we'll run airline from both sides, T it right behind this, and then that will go there. 
All right, so we got our airline here. I'm on the passenger side of the truck right now. I'm just trying to figure out where exactly I want to route this. Um, I'm probably going to use some extra pieces of foam that I have for where this airline is going to touch the body just so it doesn't rub through. Um, but as far as the fitting, it's just a quick connect fitting. It's not a compression fitting. So all this, you just push the hose down in and it's stuck. Um, whenever you go to cut the hose to attach your T and attach it at the back, you want to cut it straight. You don't want any angle in it or else you'll cause a, an air leak. So it has to be straight, clean cut. Um, a, just a razor blade will cut right through this stuff. So, But let's get to seeing where we're going to route this thing. Um, I think on this side, I'm just going to route it here and then kind of lay it up on this back side here. Probably wrap it with some uh, foam that I have in my toolbox from some other stuff. And then uh, you can wrap tape if you don't have foam, like my fancy self, but wrap it in tape just so whenever it's bouncing around, driving down the road, you ain't gotta worry about rubbing a hole in your airline. And then going over underneath this and then back over the frame. I don't know if you can see it from there. Yeah, I can. So, and then I, what I'm gonna do is bring it to the back side of the tire here and then probably mount my T somewhere along the back side here in between the tire and the bumper. And then same thing, it's coming back up over the rail back there and then kind of the same route. So should be easy enough. And then if you see the extra slack I got back there, I got plenty of air line. Then I'm gonna add some my foam. So I already got the hose pushed in, wrap this in some felt. Uh, I'm also at this contact point up here, Brian can get. I want to put something on this right here because that's going to be hitting right there. So I'm going to put something there. And then as I come back, there might be a couple more spots we'll highlight as I go. But uh, I'm going to put another piece right there. So same spot on this side. I'm going to go ahead and install my hose, make sure it's all the way seated, it doesn't pull out, and then this will get wrapped and protected, and then I'll do that same spot on that back side as well. Alright, so I've got both of those two hooked up and routed. Um, so I should have about that much left. I'm gonna cut a little, cut it, and then put my T in. And then what's left, I'll cut the little bit that I need to go up to the top to the valve by the license plate. Oh yeah. And nice. then I zip tied my wire on this side as well. Nice. And then added another contact point up there. Yeah, we have see it. So I don't rub through. So now all I got left to do is cut this last little section that I need for the T. So go ahead and put this hose in the back side of that valve. Nice. So and then cut that to about right there. And that wraps up that. So that's there. Sweet. So now we need to, I'm going to lower it down before I put the tires on, apply a little bit of air, uh, I don't know, about 5 PSI or so, check for any leaks, maybe I'll probably put in a little extra just to see if it holds all the pressure. I think these bags are rated for like 150 PSI, uh, like I said, 1500 pounds load capacity. Per bag. So, yeah, per bag, so total 3000 pounds in the bed. But I should never have that much weight. But let's uh, add some air. All right, boys, moment of truth. So I got my tire gauge. Um, this is actually something that I was going to mention. If you guys have any ideas of what I can use to put air in these bags, like if I'm random trip to the store or whatever, need some air, I don't have anything in the truck. I don't have onboard air. So if y'all got anything, comment down the comments below and let me know give me some ideas i thought about some of those battery powered air the things milwaukee one. yeah milwaukee like one uh just let me know what you guys use so that milwaukee one's 
bucks. I love mine. All right, there's 10 PSI. Oh yeah, nice and firm. Don't hear any leaks yet. See if we got anything leaking anywhere. It's looking good so far. And this side, bag's not holding nice and tight. So now I'm gonna crawl in here and spray this T joint. We're good at 10 PSI. So, uh, did you even lower this, bro? <laughs> so that is part of adding air to the bags is it's gonna lift up the rear. So if you've done a lower and your rear squats a little bit, you can actually run some higher PSI and some helper bags to help level it out. Uh, obviously, uh, there's 30 PSI in here right now, so I'm gonna drop that back down. So the rear end should come back down some, I think. Or am I level right now? I don't know. But, yeah, because I, I only plan on running 10 PSI just to keep from the bump stops hitting and then add air as I need it whenever I load the truck up. So now we're going to redo the bag test we did at the beginning of the video. And, guys, I'll go ahead. I'll show you the before clip once again. So let's go to the before clip. <laughs> and then now we're going to try the same thing. Uh, now with the helper bags on at just 30 PSI. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. And that's, that's 30 PSI too, so. And Brian's a pretty hefty boy. I'm 400 pounds. So, so. easily bottomed out without the helper bags. So with helper bags, 30 PSI doesn't bottom out, so. About shock clearance, shock the bag oh, yeah. clearance. yeah, I do need to check that. Uh, I was just under here, so actually we're clear, so. Actually stack, grab that GoPro, get that clip while you're down there. Yeah. And I can add it in now. So there's still quite a bit of clearance <laughs> right there. Uh, Probably a quarter inch or so, right in between the shock and the bag. What about when I bounce it? It's kind of hard to pick up on camera, the clearance. I'll bounce it easy, watch out. Yep. All right, as you've seen in that clip, that the shock uh, clearance is the bag pretty decent? Yeah, yeah, it's a quarter of an inch, even with Brian bouncing on it, so. So we think that's for the newer F-150s. So we did not install that on this uh, 2016 F-150. Correct. But so, other than that, everything fit great. Man, it was smooth. The fitment's great on everything. Huge shout out to IHC again, guys. Like I said, all their uh, links will be in the description box below. Check them out. Tell them we sent you. But guys, this is where we're going to end today's video. Make sure you're following Steven on Instagram, OBKYREX. Follow me on Instagram at a Brian Lewis vlog. Crow Dot Media, Walker Halls. Guys, make sure you check out the Amazon affiliate links in the description box below. Click on anything to help out the channel or click on a link, purchase anything, helps the channel at no extra charge to you. But guys, the biggest way to help is just to make sure you're subscribed. Turn on the bell so you get all the notifications. Like this video, dislike it if you didn't like it. For any reason, guys, until next, until next time. time.